Hello and welcome to the 3D Total Vodka series. My name is Paul Hellard. Today I'm talking to Brandon and Jared Shiflett, the world-renowned sculpting duo responsible for countless Marvel sculpts and original creations. They're even doing a book with 3D Total. So let's get down to Texas. G'day guys to the 3D Total Vodcast. Pleased you could join us. Um, I'd like to start with you giving us a quick summary of how you began. Jared and I started sculpting um, in the early 90s. And we there wasn't much of a statue industry back then, per se, especially these, these cold cast porcelain or these uh, statues you see yeah. today, these polystone statues. Um, it didn't really exist that much. And so when we started out, we didn't know exactly how to do it or what materials to use. We were using the wrong clay. We were using a lot the, of trial and error. the wrong wires. Um, and we come from a comic book background, the lovers of comic books. Mm. We're, we're fans of comic books. We wanted to draw the X-Men originally. Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. a lot of our peers, I think, a lot of our peers who do what we do, which is sculpt collectibles, um, they got to it from, from a love of movies and, you know, uh, characters like the Predator and Alien, and the, the Xenomorph. And of course, Jared and I love those movies. But for me and him, it was all about seeing these comic book characters in three dimensional, you know, in three dimensions. And we wanted to see Wolverine and the Hulk. And so we started doing this and we're from, we're from a little town called Beaumont, Texas. And um, we took our stuff out, all one of a kind sculptures out to the San Diego Comic Con, which is the, you know, the biggest con in the world for this kind of thing. And we got discovered really quickly. And it was, we, we were just really lucky in that respect. We really were, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. place, right time uh, at the comic book conventions. Tell me, I, I want to step back a little bit because um, I'd like to just um, understand why or how you started modeling. I know that, um, mm -hmm. uh, was it, um, as you say, you you love comics. You could you could see the characters in your in your mind, and you wanted to have them right there in front of you. Now, what sort of um, what steps did you go through? Like you were saying, you're using the wrong wire and or coat hangers or all that sort of stuff yeah, right. that I've read. Yeah. Um, did you just fly at it, just using the clay block blocks from school or? Uh, and did you did you have a kiln or did you just let it dry out? What's what was the what were the steps before you got to Sculpey? Uh, we did have a kiln. Uh, we the kilns uh, fire ceramics at uh, about two thousand degrees, so that's way too hot for the materials we work in, which is a uh, polymer clay. It bakes around two hundred or two fifty, mm. and so. Uh, we kind of comically put a couple of those pieces <laughs> into the kiln and they just started boiling, bubbling and doing all kinds of weird and things. Because we literally, you know, didn't and know what we was, were doing. Yeah, what do you that do? was a great learning experience, you yeah. know. But yeah. uh, there were some, uh, there was a dinosaur sculptor at the, some of the Texas comic book conventions we would go to. And we would kind of lurk around his table and say, what material is that made in? And what is that made in? And so then we would go home and try to find those materials. And, uh, and you know, with like coat hangers, which are extremely strong, way too strong to use, but still they were around. So, uh, you know, just kind of grabbing what we could find and trying to make stuff. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to lift weights, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like I said, we were growing up in Beaumont, Texas, and in yeah. the back of these comic books, you would see the ads for the San Diego Comic Con. It was like some sort of nirvana for us. It was some right. sort of holy land. You know, we couldn't even imagine actually going as kids. But when we finally went out there, um, our very first time. Yeah, and, just, and earlier in uh, the life of the convention, you could pull right up to the front of it. That's in a right. Cab. Like now, you can't get near it in a car. That's right. But yeah. back then, you could pull right up. I want to say this was 91. We pull up in mm -hmm. the cab, and we open the door, 
and there's Stan Lee walking right on the sidewalk. I mean, we were still in the cab and the door opened and we were there. And we so were like, we just felt like, wow. You know, and we were right like, up. well, of course, Stan Lee is just standing, <laughs> you know, waiting for us to get out. That's, it's Comic-Con, you it know? It was exciting. How, we were like, He yeah. created all of our this is great. fantasies and dreams and he's standing right there almost to greet us, you know? You can't overstate the impact it had on our careers. That's where we got almost every big job we ever got. There are other conventions, but this specific convention, San Diego, they call it the deal making convention. Um, and just it seemed like everybody who could hire us or use us in some way, in some interesting and creative way, was there in the building. It's. I don't think it's a very natural thing for us to 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 put our stuff out there and say, "Hey, look at this." You know, mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, I, we're, we're a little more reticent and more humble than that. But at the same time, you sort of have to do that. Yeah, you, you do. We don't, have, we don't have agents, you know, so you've got to be kind of be your own agent. So we would see somebody who had a property or whatever. And sometimes we'd go running after them and say, hey, will you look at, our, will you look at what we're doing? So what's your, what's your marketing core now um, from Beaumont? Um, you're able to, to push it out and find commissions all from your home studio. That's right. So I would say in the beginning of my career, we did more license work, more commercial work uh, for Marvel and companies who had the Marvel license like Bowen Designs. Um, And and that's, I think we got um, well known amongst a certain group of people with that stuff, you know. Made our bones. Yeah. That's what the kids say. We made our bones there. We like yeah. big guys and we like anatomy. And so Randy Bowen, who, who owned Bowen Designs and had the Marvel license, gotcha. would call us when he had the Incredible Hulk or the Juggernaut or Thanos. These, these big, muscular, beefy characters. And so, um, you know, that, that did a lot for us. Now, We've the comic book collectibles industry. The the work needs to be so tight and so refined and so clean. And at some point, I think Jared and I we kind of fall back against that a little bit. It's not our style. We're a little sketchier. We're a little more unfinished. Yeah, and 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 so we thought some of that stuff in terms of like um like like we were super influenced by these fantasy illustrators and comic book artists of the seventies and eighties, like Frank yeah. Frazetta. Frazetta. Yeah. And so, so Frazetta stuff is when you really look at it, it's loose and, and rough and it's dynamic. It's and real it has, tight right in the middle. But right. And as it goes out to the sides, it's kind of looser. Like mm-hmm. it gives you that kind of concept yeah. feeling. A leg can just go back into darkness. So anyway, Jared and I thought these statues are getting too tight. It's not exactly what we, you know, what, we want the style we want to do. And so we've done less of that and we've done more of our original stuff in the past 20 years. Um, it's not to say we don't take jobs because we do sometimes and we take commit, but we, we're in a very lucky position where we can pick and choose which one of the, which, one, which jobs appeal to us. Mm. It's a different kind of love. I mean, we love the Marvel stuff and I, you know, it's always fun to do a juggernaut or a Thor or whatever. But it's just a different thing when it's, you know, one of your own characters. And that's right. You can kind oh, of sure. daydream about what their stories are or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and so what, when you were talking about, you know, the, you know, our market. When we sculpt our original stuff, we can have it produced in resin and polystone, like a pre-paint statue. So somebody can put it out of the box right under their shelf. It's ready to go. And also in bronze. We have a great bronze foundry here in uh, texas wow. yeah, and deep in, the heart. deep in the heart art foundry and we partner with them and some people you know people have told us that they, they kind of like the look of our stuff in bronze the, the roughness um and so we we sell our own stuff in one of those forms you know all of those forms resin polystone and bronze and so our, um we we you want to have different price points, you know. Yeah. You want to have the little things people can walk up at a show and just buy for twenty dollars, and then you want to have the bronzes uh, because there's there's every different kind of collector. That's exactly. Yeah. And every once in a while, we get the kind of collector who who wants a one of a kind. Now, you know, 
you have to pay a price for just sure. a one of a kind. But some people have that money and they want to put it on their shelf and they want to say, no one else has this. A copy has never been made. And I own it. You know, I'm this Shiplet Brothers one of one. And so that, those are fun projects to do as well. Have you had a look at NFTs, the, uh, the digital uh, licensing of originals for your work? We're hearing more and more about that. It seems like yeah. every day. And we've ha had a lot of our peers get into that uh, with success, I would yeah. have to say. And, and so we're, we're, we're still taking we're still, information we're, about We're it. still considering it. We've had some people talk to us about it, but we're just not exactly sure and we just don't know enough about it yet. So it's, it's still like a burgeoning uh, field. Yeah. yeah. So Brandon, can you tell me uh, a bit about the 3D title publishing book project you guys are on? So Jared and I are doing three different demos in the book. Um, four. 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 And these demos are like 60 photos each. So step by step. But not only that, we bring in three of our good friends in the industry. And I'm talking about superstars level sculptors. Simon Lee. The great Simon Lee. He goes by oh, yeah. Spider Zero. And yeah. he's a film concept sculptor. He does a demo for us. Uh, Eris Colacantes from Greece is oh, a cool. spectacular talent. And he's a younger guy, but he's incredible. He does a build up for us. And the last is Forrest, Forrest Rogers, Rogers, who's a uh, a woman who's a little older than us, but she has this incredible, her it's style theory. is really beautiful and ethereal and it's, Light. it's, it's, not, it's not like Jared and I sculpt at all. So it's kind of a whole different experience. Okay. But you've got these three absolute stars who are also doing demos in our book. And we want to thank all three of them. And they come in and uh, talk about their technique and how they work. And so- uh, Because- <clears throat> Not nobody does it exactly the same way. Nobody does it. Even we do it a little differently. Yeah. You know, uh, everybody has their little uh, glitches yeah. and positives and strengths and yeah. negatives. And uh, so to have them come in and talk about, you know, from beginning to end, how they work. Uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. Um, guys, let's get mobile. I'd like to, to have a look around and, and behind you and around you. Go for it. This is Cthulhu, and this was on the cover of Amazing Figure Modeler magazine. Uh, it's an HP Lovecraft. Wait, stay on that for a minute, Jared. Oh. This is, we sculpted this in, um, Jared? Uh, Aves. In Aves, a pot sculpt. This is a mixture of Aves and a super sculpty. But the thing is, even though this one's painted, this is still the clay sculpture. This is not a reproduction. It's not resin. This is still the actual sculpture in clay. We painted it for the cover of the magazine. And eventually, we, we do think we are going to uh, make copies in resin and sell the copies in resin. This also, this is um, the Frazetta project we're working on right now, which is the Death Dealer 2 uh, famous painting of his. Let me get some light on it, Jerry. That's there awesome. And so we're doing this uh, in conjunction with the Frazetta family, the Frazetta girls, uh, uh, Holly, Frank Frazetta's daughter, and Sarah, his granddaughter. And they have the license to this. And this is, that's also going to be how we sculpted that, that Frazetta piece is going to be in the 3D total book, step by step. Wow. That's a uh, Hellboy. Very old Hellboy sculpture. Very old Hellboy sculpture. And so this is an example of uh, one of our bronzes. This is our character, Old Scratch. Mm -hmm. We asked the foundry to patina the, this, these bronzes pretty dark. We, we like the idea that we like the idea that it's maybe dark, it's very old possibly. And it's on a black granite and walnut base. That's, this is the incredible hulk that we did for Marvel and Bowen Designs back in the day. And that's a pre-painted statue. That's a pre-painted statue. There's okay. like a thousand or three thousand, a certain number. They're numbered and limited. This is another bronze, which um, is Tallulah and the Stray, little girl and the dragon. It's called Tallulah and the Stray. 
when people ask which one's Tallulah and which one's Australia, we don't tell them. We like to leave it kind of ambiguous, you know, who's safe. Yeah, sure. You can see we use aluminum alloy wire mm -hmm. and we bind it together with this floral wire and use a lot of super glue over that. But anyway, you can see, you know, it's basically like a human skeleton, you know, but super sculpty and eggs as well. They don't stand on their own. So for every horn or wing or whatever flying off, you have to have uh, some little wire armature under there. This is the Pirate King and uh, original design. I think this will be the second demo in the book. Yeah. And uh, it originally had wings and it was a female sitting on top of them, but we just changed it as we went along. Yep. And uh, which is sort of our, that's sort of our modus operandi is, you know, we're making the original stuff, we're making it up as we go along. Sure. And we'll try wings and we'll try horns and I'll ask Jared or Jared will ask me. So we art direct each other as we go. Oh, that's magnificent. That's just a tiny little resin copy of a, what we call the executioner bust. It's we call the, the super tank. So that's Professor McElroy, the inventor of this ramshackle sort of junkyard uh, tank robot. He's yeah, it's even got kind hair. Of like a red tractor. Yeah, he's uh -huh. got a little cotton tuft of hair there. And then this is his. That's his, his helper. little buddy. He's in there driving. Right in the middle of the thing. And then over here. You can see his granddaughter and her cat. She hasn't been painted yet. Right there, sitting on the inside. Is that a full bag get the whole thing, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've done several of the Professor McElroy uh, pieces, and a couple of them will be in the book. Uh, and these, you, you might imagine if, you've ever, if you know anything about mold making, are almost impossible to make molds and reproduce. So these junkyard robot pieces are just sort of one of a kinds. And we do them and oftentimes people will buy the one of a kind. Like, I, like we said, we, we are traditional sculptors and we like this tactile feeling of clay, you know, in our hands. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, most people who do what we do are using programs. And so they're sculpting digitally, they're creating a file, and maybe they're uh, 3D printing it, you know, and there's never a physical object to the end. And a lot of those people who are really good digital sculptors are our friends. A lot of that digital work we, we find amazing. At the same time, that's not what we do. You know, we, we use clay, you know, and we want to, to kind of convey to younger and beginner, beginning sculptors, even if you do choose that path and you're gonna be a digital artist, be it in video games or collectibles, having your hand in the traditional world every once in a while, getting your hands dirty as it were, teaches you things about sculpture that you might not get in, the, in, in being digital exclusively. Things like gravity and weight. Um, you know, some things me and Jared do are, are almost like happy accidents. Like. I've had a piece fall off the table and like it land on its head and it bent its head and you're like, oh, that's better. That's better than I had it the first time. I'm not sure that kind of stuff happens in digital, but we just want to sort of keep this mode of sculpting maquettes and collectible stuff in this scale, um, sculpting with clay uh, by traditional means. We kind of want to keep it alive. Yeah, we're proud to keep it up. Yeah, we're proud to keep it alive. Uh, and we've all, all our lives, we've wanted to do a book, you know, on the uh, stuff. So we're, we're just super happy and uh, honored, honored and I uh, hope people enjoy it. You know, we've got a, a sculpting forum and a lot of those people, we've been telling them about it for years. So I think some of them think we're lying. <laughs> but we were talking about Comic-Con in the early 90s. This was one of the first. I think it was the second Comic-Con in 1992. We met wow. Warren Lanning. And uh, we had, he was famous because he had just done the uh, polar bears for Coca-Cola. Coca yeah. That was a huge commercial. Yeah. So the CG stuff was still brand new. And uh, he was on the cutting edge of it. He's a great artist himself. And we, 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 we were not professionals. You know, we just had our stuff in the art show yeah. with little business cards we had made up. And he found us. And I mean, you could say he discovered us. He was certainly mm -hmm. one of the very first. And 
we saw some of his artwork for the game and the, the designer Steve Olds, and it just, just looked visionary. Yeah, absolutely visionary. And they said, can you guys sculpt these characters, you know, for this game? And back then, they needed, um, nowadays, as I said, all this happens in, you know, on the computer. Back but then they back needed then, sculptures yeah. to scan. And yeah. so uh, we made the characters for Oddworld all about two feet tall, and they mm -hmm. scanned them in. And I just saw somebody that the aide still uh, exists. Lauren still somewhere. has that. Like, yeah, Lauren has it in amazing. his office. He still has the Abe sculpt from that game. I, I want to say we did seven or eight. So that was, stuff. we worked on a couple of video games, but that odd world is the one that people still miss For sure. to us. For yeah. sure, because we're not exactly video game guys, but um, to this day, it has it's a little cult it's following. like 30 years later, still a couple times a month, we get someone emailing saying hey what was it like or you know uh <laughs> asking for information about the game so they're diehard fans that's for but, sure yeah absolutely tell me about i mean I, the breakout there um tell me about your studio i mean you've you've uh, you've got a is it a wide area or is it uh do you have so so you good jerry yeah he was tending to the dog. Was yeah, yeah, sure. That's why I wanted to lean out to the um, your surroundings. I wanted to bring yeah. people in on that. So we have, we, 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 we don't, we used to live together and work right together. Yeah, we, we used had, to have our desks pushed right yeah, together. Yeah, partner desks, like facing <laughs> each other. That's so a we recipe were, for disaster. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was. And we, were, and we were sculpting around the clock, so it's all, it's all we yeah. did. But honestly, a lot of times, People come up to us at shows and say, "How do you work with your brother or your sibling?" You know, and I'm like, "We've never, we've never had a problem." But Jared and I, I think we, our aesthetic, uh, our aesthetics are the same. We, 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 the, we were influenced by all the same artists growing up, yeah. and so I think me and Jared want the end product to look a certain way, and it's almost always the same way. We very rarely have artistic differences. Where I mean, very rarely, um, and so. But I, we, 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 we don't live together anymore. We have two different, we live about 30 minutes apart. And so I have a studio uh, down close to the downtown Dallas and Jared's up a little bit north, hmm. which we, we kind of jokingly call Schiffler Brothers South and Schiffler Brothers North. But it's still easy living that, living that close to each other. We can collaborate, bring pieces, switch back and forth. Did you mention the artist we had worked with? Oh, we were talking, we like were talking about Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah, Lauren Lanning. We collaborated with Alex Ross. Uh, Randy Bowen. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. done a lot Talked of about Simon we, Lee. He's in Simon Canada. Lee, right. And he's he sculpted uh, one of our characters before. And um, we sculpted a lot of pieces with Claiborne Moore, a Texas sculptor. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how the industry's changed? Not just because of the web, but how mm -hmm. um, your sculpting style has changed. Has it stayed loose? Have you decided to hang on to that? We certainly have. Yeah, yeah. we have. And uh, I believe that's just our aesthetic. I believe that's how we see things, you know? Um, yeah, we want to feel like where you almost feel like the sculptor has just got up and walked away. You know what I mean? And it's still in that kind of primordial stage. Yeah, it's fresh. We have the tools and uh, like the sanding sponges where we could go in there and clean it up and make it more, you know, uh, polished and smooth. But we, uh, we prefer that kind of sketchy, you know, in Texas, uh, everywhere you go, there's a, a sculpture by Remington. It yeah. was this uh, Southwestern, you know, it's like, Wild West, like a yeah. horse, uh, that cowboy on a horse that's bucking or something. And so, that kind of very loose, rough thing is just uh, yeah. It's and all like, it's always kind and of like we were drawn, drawn to we us. were drawn to Rodan. You know, we're not Rodan, but that I think it just has a little more energy, a little yeah. more rawness. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we if you clean everything up um, to the nth degree, I think a lot of times uh, different artists can they can all start looking the same. Yeah where I think if you keep your personality in it, you know, I think sometimes it's one of my favorite things when I see a sculpture and I say, oh, I know who did that. That's yeah. Simon Lee. And yeah. I think some people say, 
oh, that's the Schiffler brothers. And now they may be saying, that's the Schiffler brothers and I hate it, but at least they know it's our yeah, style. You know. Know. <laughs> it's easy to try to work something towards the kind of the lowest common denominator in the hopes that you'll appease more people. You know, like everyone can agree this is Captain America, but it's more fun a little bit if you're doing kind of, you know, uh, if you add a little spice or something in there, you might lose some of the base fans, but, you know, uh, it's just more fun as an artist to, uh, you know, kind of. And I think, and I think what Jared's saying is, is so true because I think a lot of the comic book statue collectors, let's say, maybe didn't love our stuff. What's buoyed mine and Jared's career since the beginning is Say the what? love is the love of other artists. Yeah. And, and so artists are drawn to our stuff for whatever reason, thank the maker. Uh, and that, and so artists feel compelled, well-known artists feel compelled to talk about it and tell people why they love it, you know? Yeah. And so it may not have been, we may not have been perfect for action figures or for comic book statues, but there is a niche for us. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, I'll, I would love to go back to that little point of keeping the artist in the in the in the uh, the model. Um, mm -hmm. That loose style is your style. Mm -hmm. It's like Stan Lee um, making the uh, the cameo uh, appearance in every one of his movies because it's his yeah. movie. Right. Um, you could you could yeah. Uh, yeah. do a, a thumbprint yeah. on the underside of each of your models so that it's your thumbprint. Right. <laughs> you know? right. That's great. And we just feel like. There are very important, the whole thing always <laughs> isn't totally loose. There sure. are very important parts to me in general. And sometimes maybe it's a, like a triangle, like the two hands and the head. And so this, we, we determine which areas are important. So this stuff is important and it may be hyper detailed, but these packs and stuff back here that he has on his back, yeah, you know, he's got some packs on his back, but that's less important to us. It's, 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 a, it's a design element. But it's not like I really need to work all down that. You get it. And that's how, kind of how we approach it. And I don't know if it's right or wrong, but that, that's how we do it. Sure. So what's in the, what's in the future for you guys? Are you, are you uh, booked up? How, how's, how's your workbook going? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We're, We're always like two pieces behind <laughs> yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. That's the way. It's, it, it's a double-edged sword, you know. We're super excited about the book yes. coming out. I mean, we've done some we, we've done some instructional videos and master classes for like the Noman workshop but this is all video stuff now to have something in print you know we're yeah. kind of book people and comic book people and just and having a book with these things is with these with these demos inside them it's going to be really cool and important to us what's the um your the scale of of uh the the models are gorgeously intricately like Mm -hmm. A foot tall is the regular size, or that's right. So that's considered one six scale. So it's like one okay. six of a human person. And if a six foot tall man would be a foot tall in one six. Scale. Okay. So we can go a little smaller, but our tricks kind of start to break down. Yeah. And we can go a little bigger. And the biggest thing we've probably done is like a life size chupacabra, which was right under five feet. Uh, but most of them we keep in that scale. And, and, and really that one six scale, which is pretty industry standard, Jared and I really like to go a little smaller than that. Like if our figure could be 10 inches, mm -hmm. that's really our wheelhouse if we can. If we can. Now some people, you know, obviously some jobs want it one six. Um, and so we do that. But I, I like sculpting characters like nine, 10 inches. That's really my favorite. One thing we've got going is uh, our online forum mm. where it's okay. open It's open 24 seven and there's always uh, pros and amateurs, every level of sculptor. And uh, you can come in there and people will answer your questions from all parts of the world. It's very international. And uh, yeah, and it's, it's on Facebook. It's called the Shiflet Brothers Sculpting Forum. Okay. So if you search it, you can find it. It's, Mm. 35,000 members plus. Um, and we keep and, it real friendly. And yes. all the trolls out. Yeah. So it's not, it's real uh, and you, and you approachable. Can talk, you can talk to Jared and I about our stuff and we can give you tips. But there's with, there, there are also many other badasses, people better than us who even can tell you things. But whatever the question is, 
you're looking for, if you're struggling, uh, people in there, it's a really strong community. If you're a sculptor of any kind, digital or traditional, please join us. Yeah, we welcome all kinds of sculpture. If you're making carving stuff with a chainsaw, if you're making mobiles out of found objects or anything, we you can come on in there and uh, find some like-minded people. Brandon, Jared, it's been fantastic talking to you and thank you for the little tour on the table behind you and, um, and a, a, a fantastic little run around your career. It's uh, tremendous. And we're really looking forward to the 3D Total publishing book that you're putting together. Thank you again. Hey, Paul, oh, it was a you. pleasure. Thank you, man. Great to talk to you, man.